Hi, I'm Keith Parsons. We'll be talking a little bit about the Wi-Fi stress test. And I'll look around to you guys because you're here in the room too. Oh, anyway. So, thanks. So this is a, a vendor independent stress test unlike other vendors whose job is to make their APs look good. So one type of test you might be familiar with when you're little kids, you had an egg. And elementary school kids get an egg, they take it home, and their job is to wrap it with whatever you have at home and make it as safe as possible so when you drop it off the roof, it doesn't break. Another type of test would be one like in high school where they give you a sack of popsicle sticks and the job is to take, everyone gets the same popsicle sticks, but your design changes how much weight you can hold. So it might be a two foot gap in between something and then you put as much weight as possible. You know you've done really well when your bridge breaks. So this test was not to protect an AP. We weren't out there trying to make them like uh, a vendor would saying, oh, let's coddle our AP or let's tweak it to make it as good as possible. No, we wanted to break the access points. So we break the access points by taking them to their limit, putting as absolute much data through the air as possible. But like the bridge where everyone got the same popsicle sticks, in this case, we have 30 iPads, same 30 iPads. They were in the exact same place for every single test. The APs were mounted in the same place. The room was the same. The channel was the same. The frequencies were the same. The bandwidth was the same. The only thing we changed was the AP. And just like the bridge, you wanted to find out how long you could go before it broke. And success from my side was the test worked. Not a single AP finished the test. They all broke. Which, from a test designer, you'd want to, you know, if you were designing the bridge test, you didn't want to have too few of weights. You wanted to be able to break everyone's bridge. And so we broke everyone's bridge. And we did exactly what it says. Stressed it until it broke. It was vendor independent. Didn't have any vendor money. I happened to have some money, so I bought this stuff. I mean, why else would you have 30 iPads? They're fun to test with. So we had 30 iPads, a rack, a server, all the little parts to run the tests. And because it was vendor independent, we could do things and say stuff that vendors couldn't say. Uh, we had volunteers. Over 30 volunteers during the week came in. And I think the least we ever had was like 15 people at a time in the room. Lots of eyes watching what goes on. Unlike some vendor tests who use ICSA chariot or other professional tools where you just have one person managing the network, this test required volunteers. As you're going to see in a minute when you do it, there's got to be someone standing in front of the iPad, clicking on it and talking and, and making it happen. So during the test, there's a lot of noise, people talking. And the more noise, the worse it is for the AP. Because that means there's failures happening. So we also wanted it to be repeatable. I didn't use anything that was, you couldn't just get on the internet for free. We had FileZilla for FTP, JPerf. Uh, I used Zapper, a uh, free tool on iOS. I liked it. We did a zap test on every single AP, but the report already got to be 68, 70 pages long, so I didn't include all the zap information. It wasn't included in any of the calculations. But we captured the data. I just didn't want to have to explain CDF curves <laughs> and have people go, huh? Uh, instead of using the iPad's video player or the YouTube player app, we chose to go with Safari. One is we had a bunch of uh, individual school districts say, we don't know if iOS 6.x is going to even have anything but Safari. So we chose HTML video and hired a web company to give us a HTML video player that runs on the web server. And there's really the answer to these questions. K through 12 came and said, are we ready for one to one initiative? And I'm like, I don't know. Are you? And they're like, that wasn't helpful. What? Can we get there? Our school district you know, superintendent saying to the IT department, can we get to one-to-one? -one? It's coming up. Are you ready? Well, how do you know you're ready? Some of the questions, can we put 30 iPads in a single room streaming video? And I said, multicast? And they went, huh? I said, they all want everyone to watch the same picture at the same time. No. We want them each to be able to see their own videos. Well, we did our first test using YouTube. Didn't have a local server. And then the complaints were, wait, wait, you're, the size of the pipe out to the internet changes. Yeah? The busyness of YouTube changes. 
So we went to a local server to take that whole link out of the equation. And the other is how much traffic can, in fact, yeah, it's this a minute ago. How much traffic can one access point handle? Answers. Do you know? As much as it can handle. As, as much as the air can handle at any one time. So to get to the answer, well, we found out exactly what it could do. And the other one, aren't all access points the same? Basically, I'll, re I'll rephrase this. This is what some superintendents told the school districts that said, why don't you just go down and buy one at Best Buy? They're a lot cheaper, true, but, and so part of the reason for the test was to answer these. It's a single simple test. Now, it's, I've got like three slides of just caveats. There's so many things it doesn't do. It doesn't do roaming. It doesn't do 40 megahertz channels. It only has single streams. Yeah, I didn't have that much money to get all the other stuff. So we just got just this little teeny test. There's lots more we can do. But what we want to do is hold everything constant and only change out the AP. So lots of faults in it. Uh, it's not terribly real world. That's what I hear from vendors. What I heard from the K-12 was, yes, we want to stream 30 different streams to various iPads at the same time. Can you do it? It was really close to even get to 30 without the FTP on top of it. Now, we didn't go with any special uh, constant bitrate videos to see how much we could put on. We just took straight up YouTube videos, what the normal school would do. So it was pretty close to real world. I doubt you're going to have someone doing a full FTP on top of that, but we did that to make sure that it died. So the stuff we learned. We learned cable trumps wireless. Duh, right? You all know that. But part of the reason for that was Apple TVs. Schools want to put Apple TVs up, and Apple TVs have wireless built in. If you have a device that's in fixed location, it should be on a wire. Your Apple TV is mounted next to your projector. Why are you not cabling it? And what we showed with the test was uh, you don't want to do it that way. We actually ran some tests first. <coughs> To tune the test, we had Apple TVs connected to iPad minis streaming to put a background load on. And when we had those three running, we couldn't get more than five iPads to work. They are just nasty little devices, the way they form these little ad hoc networks. Uh, 40 megahertz trumps 20, another duh. But this changed my mind a lot. I used to be totally pro 20 megahertz channels in 5 gig, because I hate co-channel interference. Co-channel interference sucks. It's the hardest thing to get rid of. And so to stay away from it, I just went 20 megahertz channels. I have more channel choices. I saw so much benefit in 40 that I've changed my mind now. I'm, I'm pushing 40 instead. The better you can band steer and band balance, well, obviously, you have two radios. If they're both working at the same time, you have more capacity. So what we found was the vendors whose devices were best at band steering also were the best in pulling this off. And the frequencies have a limited capacity. They just, when you hit it, you're there. During the test, we had one, power, one projector showing spectrum analysis on the left side, and the projector on the right side was showing air magnet with uh, utilization, packet utilization. And even without listening to how many errors were happening in the videos, just watching those, you could predict when it was going to die. You hit 77.5% utilization. And the spectrum, there was no time slices available. What's going to happen when you add five more iPads? The whole thing just collapses. Uh, and use professional tools. I love Fluke. I love the Fluke air check. I use it all the time. I like giving it to people. But it is not a spectrum analyzer. We had guys walk around going, oh, yeah, we got a lot of spectrum. Wait, you have Channelizer and Channelizer Pro simultaneously on the screen, and you're looking at a Fluke for spectrum? No. Use the right tool for the right place. And since I covered all those, we can skip all that. <coughs> Stop on this one for a second. We had a, 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 some time when one vendor was trying to finish up uh, their config and said, you know, it's going to take us 20 minutes or so to download some firmware. You got something to do? So we grabbed the Airport Extreme, and we put it in 40 megahertz. Totally unfair, I know. Testing 40s versus 20s, kind of dumb. But it was a Soho device. I don't know if you can see it on here, but this gray line is the average. The video errors, the further to the right, is better. That means we, have, we went a longer time with fewer errors. The gray line here at the bottom is throughput. 
and the higher the throughput, the better. The blue line happens to be the 40 megahertz throughput line for this little SOHO device. It rocked way above our averages. In fact, if we cut it in half from 40 megahertz and just said, hey, it's 20, it's half as good, it was still way better than average. Now, the reason for that was the iPads were also 40 megahertz. So each of the video clients was getting on and off quicker, kind of gave it an unfair advantage. So this was not included in the averages. I just wanted to stop and say, this guy rocks. We were all impressed. We didn't think that it was going to pull off so much. Do you think it rocks because it's awesome, or do you think it rocks because of 40 megahertz? Uh, for sure, it rocked because of 40 megahertz, no doubt. That was there. In addition to that, it, it was better than you would have thought, even with that doubling. And you so, could not disable 40 megahertz. You couldn't make it a 20 megahertz zone. We didn't have time to get into their little code. And they've got that, that front end that's finding 20. It was like, ah, let's just do 40. So. And at what point did it break? Like 10 iPads, 15 iPads? It got all the way to 25. Wow. Which is as high as the best we got off of anyone. Now, again, it's 40 megahertz, so the clients were also 40s. Uh, and a couple other things we learned. One of the things we learned was what we felt during the test was not the same thing as what we recorded. So you're standing in the room, 10, 15, 20 people playing with iPads, doing an FTP push, people are yelling out as video errors come on, it's loud, or if it's really quiet, that's good. We had a couple, like a, a little Linksys. It was supposedly the best Linksys made, $160. That's a lot for a Linksys. And we were in the room going, this thing rocks, it's phenomenal. But it got to 10 on download with hardly any errors at all, as good as the best AP enterprise APs. But it was probably tuned to video. I mean, it's going to homes probably tuned so it could do a better video. Its FTP was terrible, though. But as soon as we did an FTP upload, so the little CPU in there had to go down and up simultaneously, it died really quick. So it felt good in the room, but the stats showed that it died actually earlier than it felt. So we had some differences there between there. And we didn't test anything about features, manageability, whether or not they supported VLANs, whether or not you could even have, some didn't even have band steering when we tested them. But we weren't testing price or any of those things. Band steering helps two different APs, same time in the test. I think this was 15. They were running 15 iPads during FTP download. And you can tell which one had more time slices available. Why do you think this guy had more time slices available? What? They're both band steering. Uh -oh. Now that would be band obvious better. too. What? Band steering better. Band steering better. But to drill down to this, we had a couple of guys, uh, Trent and Joel from MetaGeek. We said, well, this is obviously there's some time that there's nobody's asking for stuff. That's good. Why? So what we did is we looked in IPA, another MetaGeek tool, to see at the same time the same load at the same retries, 12% versus 13. These guys were averaging 83 meg throughput, and these guys 49. Now, what would make that difference? Now, this is why this one's having gaps. Retries. The one, no, they had nearly the identical retries. It's that every time they talked, they got on and each iPad got on and off the frequency faster not quite double the throughput, meaning there was more time available. Well, now you have to get into why were they getting on and off faster. Each of the iPads had the exact same chipset. What we changed was the AP. So these differences we're seeing were definitely in the APs. When we hit the spectrum and it loaded up, it was all over. You could watch it. It just died. So. Whole bunch of caveats. This is what the environment looked like. We had uh, six tables. Each table had five iPads. When they're standing up, that meant that they were either getting powered or they've been reset. When they were in the test, we moved them down into a position I'll show in a second. In the back of the room back here, we had this server, the same server we have here. Uh, there's FTP, iPerf, Zap, and HTML5 video server. The FortiGate was running DHCP, DNS, and NAT. Uh, for some vendors, we hooked up the router out to the internet like uh, 
Um, Meraki needed to get to the internet in order to do their configs. Most vendors were local. Some vendors chose to go controllered. Some went controllerless. Some who could go both made a choice on the fly and picked one. Uh, Ruckus chose controllerless. Aerohive obviously controllerless. Cisco was, do we you know, run autonomous? They almost went and then they switched and said, now we're going to go to the controller. Uh, Aruba's we did uh, instant. So it was all kind of all over the map. It was actually a portable classroom. And then what we did is we put the AP under test in the next room over. Now in between the two rooms, there was a 3 dB wall. We measured, not, a, not terribly, it was a portable classroom, it wasn't a big wall. And on the other side of the wall, we put the AP. Every AP hung on the exact same T-rail at the same little marked location. The iPads, we put little marks on the table with tape, and they were in a consistently inconsistent manner. We wanted them to be different. They wanted them to be the same different. So in between every test, when they were standing up, it meant that they were, uh, hadn't been configured yet. As soon as we configured them for that AP, we would put them into one of these five positions. Portrait, landscape, short up, short back, or standing up. The entire tests were all monitored. We had MetaGeek running on one side, Air Magnet running on the other. We used Fluke Air Check to double check to make sure that the specs we asked for, 20 megahertz, channel 11, channel 36, SSIDs with band steering, we'd fire up to make sure they were ready before we did the test. Obligatory Visio file. So here's the process we did. First thing we did, we took all the iPads and watch, because you're going to do it here in a minute. We took all the iPads and we reset them to wireless. Any iPad guys want to tell us how to do that? General. General, settings. settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, reset, reset network settings. Don't reset the entire box, please. <laughs> Just the network settings. And then that would force it to do a reboot. Then we wouldn't stand them up so we knew that they'd been done. Next, we took all the iPads. People would grab a table. And we would have them associate to the target SSID. We also went to the MacBooks and had them associate to the target SSID. So we didn't want the association cycle to get in the way. So we associated everything. Then we put them all to sleep. So they were off the network. We didn't power them down. We just slept them. And at that point, we did an FTP, iPerf, and ZAP test. We, again, we threw the ZAP out of the report. We had them, but it was just going to make the report too long. So what we did for the FTP test, went to a MacBook that was stuck on a table, same spot every time associated up to the test AP, and we downloaded with FileZilla a 600 meg file. Counted, captured its time. FTP answer came in time. Then we would upload the exact same file. Again, the answer came in time. And in the beginning, their times were pretty short. 20 seconds, 22 seconds, pretty low. And then we'd go over to an iPerf, and iPerf was at the front of the room, a different location, and did an iPerf on a MacBook, connected the same AP, and did an iPerf test for 20 seconds, and the answer came back in size. For the aggregate data answer, we took 600 megabytes divided by its time, plus 600 megabytes divided by its upload time, plus 20 seconds divided into that total bandwidth. Basically, we just averaged them all together. So this is what data transfer looked like. First one we do is no load. Surprising fact, under no load, huge variability. You wouldn't think it'd be very much variable. You had a MacBook, an AP, nothing else in the room was turned on. It could choose whichever band it wanted and did. It would connect at whatever spatial streams it wanted. It's a MacBook Pro with three spatial stream support. It could connect all the way up to 450 and sometimes did. Sometimes it would connect as low as 110 all because of whatever the AP in it negotiated. So under no load, we went from a low of 20 to a high of 48 with no, no difference. Then we started iPad, five iPads running. Turn them on, power them up, go to the web browser, Safari, and click play on this video server against the local video server. And then watch this Star Wars movie come on. We heard Star Wars Return of the Sith hundreds of times. <laughs> I would go home and I'd hear it in my head. And I'm in the car and there's no Star Wars around. We'd turn on five. And then we would do this little thing, watching for errors. And I've got the next slide, I'm going to show you how to do your job of watching for errors. 
And then while they were running, once they're all up, we go to the FTP, start an FTP download. Time it. Upload. Time it. iPerf. Capture it. Then repeat. Add five more iPads, start the process again. When the next five are running, FTP, download, upload, iPerf. Cycle through over and over. So to track a video error, this is where the humans come in. Last year at Aruba, we were sitting there and people went, artifact, artifact, you know, right? We saw, we didn't count artifacts. That's very qualitative. And since we had some vendors in the room volunteering to help other vendors test, we wanted to make it a little more quantitative. So we had this little chart, look, something like this, and there was one guy assigned to be the tick master. He would write little ticks down. His job was just to sit back with a clipboard and wait to hear everyone else. And your job when you test it will be to be doing, following these rules. First, if you see a video, and you've, maybe you'll have four or five in front of you, and you see one artifacting, just kind of pay attention to it. If it's just stuttering or whatever, think of a you know, elementary school kid watching a video. He's not going to be all weirded out if it just shuddered. You know, he's been watching YouTube his whole life, so it's not a big deal. But if you have to click on the little play button, it freezes, the play button comes up on, in front of the video, it stopped. You click, you say nine, whatever, each iPad has a number on them, you just call out the number nine. The tick master goes one on nine and counts up how many times it happens. Now don't go crazy if you like nine, 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 nine. You don't give it a chance to catch up just because you really don't like that vendor. So <laughs> we, we give it, you know, don't, don't be like crazy about it. If you get more than 10 ticks with an appropriate amount of time in between, we call that one dead, which meant don't stop it because we want its load to stay on the network. Just stop yelling its name. And if it died, you would then close the browser, double click on the home button on the iPad, go to the browser, hold it down until it went away, delete it, start a new browser, and start the whole process over. We wanted the load coming off of every iPad, even the dead ones. We just didn't want to hear you going, nine, 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 forever. In between every five, every iPad that was dead was resurrected. It's alive. And it can start its count over again. You know, the little tick mark, there was five in the first row, 10 in the second row, and they each got a, a new count. We were thinking it might be the vertical ones are sicker than the flat ones, or that one of the orientations might have something. And this is one where we had a feeling. We had a feeling, ooh, number four, number nine, number 14, they were all, they felt bad. They were the ones that tilted away from the AP. And so everyone's like, yeah, it's that away. But when we actually looked at the raw data and took all the tick marks and ran numbers horizontally and vertically and tracked them, there was no statistical difference between any orientation. It just sounded like it in the room. I think it was because the guy who was on number nine really said it loud. Nine. <laughs> Thank you for filling in. Nine. So FTP was a 600 meg, actually 602 meg file. iperf 20 seconds. And then aggregate throughput is the total of all packets divided by the time. And some people, like Andrew Von Eggie, looked at the number. He was there. And afterwards, he goes, you, only, you came up with a 48? That is a little number for a 3 by 3 video stream. I said, I don't care what the number is. It was 600 meg plus another 600 meg divided by the time. That's what we got. Now, it included the click time, and the FTP session had to start. And it had to, whatever the time was, it was, just, it was the same for everyone. It's not saying 48 meg is the max throughput that AP ever put out. It was just our metric that we counted. So here's some little views of what it looked like. People standing around yelling nine. Nine. Got it. So they just sit and some people stood, some people did. That one variable through the test was uh, bags of water. Some of us are bigger bags than others. <laughs> and some people got really close to the competition holding the iPad up. Uh, now, and they're like, but there's more people around. Yeah, there is, but we're not that, that much DB loss, and they're buffering anyway. Uh, everyone asked this question. Every vendor that came in, and most of the volunteers, and they said, what size is that video stream? And I said, who cares? 
but, but, but we have to know. Why? Because, well, okay, so what I did is I took them over, and my answer is really how big is the pipe? Because the video stream wasn't a constant bitrate video. It was a file going to an HTML player that took it as fast as you could give it to it and would fill its buffer. So to prove it, we took the MacBook Pro that was doing FTP and played the video and then looked on the interface to the AP, the wired interface, and it was pushing 120 meg plus. That's just saying, how fast can that video server push it out? And then someone said, wait, our AP can take more data faster than that. We have two radios. So we took the same thing and we ran 30 simultaneous videos on the MacBook Pro. And that was really crazy to listen to. Dun, 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 all over again. And even at that, we were pushing 240. The server was running an SSD with 16 gig of RAM. And I don't think that it was the bottleneck. The bottleneck was the air. So we just want to show it, it's not here. And it really doesn't matter the size of the video. The next test we're going to be doing, people have asked, said, oh, can you do the reverse of this test? Can you test what does it take to get 30 videos to stream simultaneously, each different? That's a whole different test. That's saying, what do we need to do to our video streams? Can we make them constant bit rate? Can we make them the same size? Can we make them not scale? Can we say we don't want HD, we only want 720, not 120? You know, those kind of things. We tuned the test to make sure that we had failure within our 30 iPads. I wanted it to fail. A, a bridge breaking test that didn't break bridges was kind of useless. So the first thing we did is we had iPads up connected to Apple TVs, three of them. That was too much load. We were failing like five iPads. We took the FTP file and we had a two gig FTP file. That was too big because it took too long. So we scaled the different pieces down. We had 40 megahertz channels and only a handful died in, within 30 iPads. That was too much bandwidth to choose. So this test was tuned to do exactly what it did. So we tuned it to do that. So here are the results. Up to the right is better. The red line's average. The blue line was whoever was maximum. The green line was the minimum. I just happened to throw a standard deviation on this to see. That's the surprising one. Under no load, with nothing going on, there's a wide variability. And the variability stayed, and some died really early. So this was aggregate throughput numbers. And here's the individual ones. And you're like, what? I couldn't figure out a cool way to make it easy to see 16 lines on the screen at the same time without making your eyes go crazy. So we're, we didn't do much of those. So I did it this way. Plot each one at a bar. The black one is average, so you can kind of get an idea is above or below average. From 48 to 21, that's what it was during no load. Added five APs, obviously it dropped, as you'd expect, more APs in more iPads in the air, taking time away from FTP, FTP would drop, and it would continue to drop down. We lost a couple here, lost a couple more, and when, by the time we got to 20 iPads, there's only four that could even transfer FTP at all. For video errors, each tick counted as another one, so we're counting ticks, total aggregate ticks. Average is the red line, Blue line are the losers, uh, sorry, the minimums. The green line is the maximum. Sorry, these minimum errors, maximum errors. Down to the right is better. The longer you could maintain no errors, the better you are at serving up video. And another crazy one. Find your favorite AP in there. So not many errors with five. Add 10. One guy dropped off the grid at 10. Uh, Ubiquity here, I'm sorry, Linksys here, that's a Soho one. It hung in there pretty good, even at 10. Get to 15, start you know, a third or gone. By the time we got to 20, most of them were gone, and only one lasted to 25. At this point, Ruckus was, uh, Jared Griffith was the SE there, and he goes, please, let me see if I can get 30. So we turned off the FTP and tried to get 30 to work. And he, even without FTP, 30 didn't work. So nobody made it to 30 at any, any point at all. 
So the rankings, everyone's like, where's the rank? Am I high? Am I low? I really don't care. What I cared about was the learning. What did we learn in this process? One, APs are different. Two, you can maximize out 20 megahertz channels pretty easily. It doesn't take that much to do it. So lots of uh, caveats in there, and you can read that in the report. So here's the throughput rankings. We also had iPad Air rankings. Uh, and just because you win in one doesn't mean you win in the other. Because when I did it overall, which APs were balanced, took the ranking from one and took the ranking from the other and compared them, uh, they shuffled out. Questions? If you go look at the report, there's a whole bunch of individual ones. Each individual AP shows how it did compared to average on bandwidth and video. You want to go track? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the server, get, make sure it's up and running. I'll fire up an AP, unless you want to test one of yours. Did you uh, test the Motorola as well? Uh, did you consider testing Motorola no. as well? We can test Motorola if they want. I didn't want to force it on them. Okay. I mean, it's like, like instantaneous here. Throw it into the mix. So I just got done saying no one won, and that's probably not a marking people don't like to hear that. Uh, so I have one we can test. I just wanted to see, have you experience it. Everyone who was in the room when we experienced it went, wow, those guys actually had errors. Almost to a person, everyone who came in said, there's no way you're going to, 30 iPads, that's it? We can run 30 iPads on our AP. And yet when we ran the test, they failed. And when you experience it, you have a whole different feeling. So what I'll do is I'll fire up the server. then. Uh, in fact, we're not going to replicate this perfectly. I just want you to have the experience. We'll have you grab two or three iPads, uh, everyone who wants to play along. And as soon as the server's up and the AP's up, we'll run through the process. You guys good for that? Quick question, sure. Kate. As people, the people that were helping you, did you um, make them shut down their smartphones and all of that? Or? No, the, we, were, we were near a neighborhood. Yeah. And there, we ran the spectrum analyzer all the time. And we, at, at two times, the Medigate guys said, oh, wait, there's, we need to hold off for a second. There's some weird anomaly going on. Or we track down the anomaly. But there was, there was low level uh, stuff going on all the time. We did, because we had it up in the pack analysis, catch people doing DOS attacks, doing uh, uh, <laughs> manual band steering. When their band steering wasn't working, let's just see if I can de-auth a whole bunch of them really fast and force them to band steer over. Uh, changing the channels from 20 to 40 megahertz live. So having the, the pieces up there was quite helpful. So, Other questions? OK, let's go do it. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be a. This is more for an experiential thing than a real test. <laughs> yeah, there might, there might not be any air time. Yeah. Uh, I need a power. You have another extension cord? Yeah. So I've got juice to here. Hello. I just need to find the next closest. That's for you. Uh, I brought it in. I just have it. I think there's, oh, there's one. <laughs> just just pop it in. Blake's not much of a chat. No, I had it custom built for it. Did you, did you use that on me? I did. I did, yeah. yeah. No, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. You can take this off, too. It's just. Oh. Okay, let's turn the server on. So just they're numbered, and they should be ninety-seven. They're, they should be all loaded. No, they're they're just numbered. Take a couple. One's, well, you need like three or four in front of you to, to have the experience.
Yeah. You're taking it all in. I just wish he didn't have it one bag of water per iPhone. I thought he had one person per iPhone. But you think about it. Yeah, I guess one adult equals two kids. Maybe you do it. Okay. I guess some adult equals two kids. I've got other. Is this Pelican? No. What? Oh, there we go. Got it. Yeah, you can come around this side and show you. Are the mics on? So we have a router providing DHCP and DNS. A switch is just connecting all the target AP to the router and to the server. And then this server down here has a, a video server, FTP server, and a iPhone server. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we do our TMB well, first I'm going to fire up the machine, and then we'll start an FTP session, and then we'll have each of the iPads start videos, and then we'll see if we can put a load on the network with all those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hold on. You said 157 is the best? It's not her bag, baby. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Alright. So, so it's not like she's helping us. It's the one that's not bad. Yeah. 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 Is it as strong as it's not strong? It's probably not as strong. I can't take one off, though. Is that better? Probably longer. Can you taste that? Yeah. <laughs> 
It's been knocked around pretty good there. Yeah, I just want to show you guys why it's probably 157 or 8. You can't see one from yourself. Wow, that is clean. I can't even see any noise. Yeah, it's like entirely black. <laughs> <laughs> you have any get that runs what, for the block yeah. of nine? Yeah, uh, it's a little cleaner up on the upper uni two band, right? Versus uh, down on the lower band. Yeah, what's that all about? I wish we could use that big gap. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if the Medicaid yeah, so is going like, to. Um, especially like back in the day, we can match. We're always up in the. First of all, it's actually really close to the upper uni two, so 149 and above. Has anybody ever seen this program before for application? Are you familiar with it? Why is it DBX? So um, on the bottom, it's indicative of data input, right? So um, a lot of data going on at specific time periods. This is kind of chattery, but um, just typical best effort packets. If you, uh, I don't have. We don't have anything that's launched interference, do we? Like a camera or anything? Uh, I think someone here. Sam? I got Jim. All right, uh, so if you turn on a Wi Fi camera, you'll see a spike. Well, we've had Medigate present at Tech Field Day like oh, four did. times, so. <laughs> yeah. It's a great tool, you know. I just kind of have to it. What? What is the here you Oh, it's Apple Extreme 5 gigahertz. Yeah. Well, there's two there's two airport extreme SSIDs, so I was asking. Yeah. Yeah, they run 40 megahertz channels. And have a newer chipset. No, it's one in each frequency problem. Yeah, it's that yeah. <laughs> so are we, we're not connecting yet though, are we? Pete, what's the password? Password. <laughs> so make sure they can all get on and they get an IP address. <laughs> yes, password's password. Works good. All lowercase there, Keith? Airport extreme parts. Yes. Password, P A S W R E. That didn't work. Yeah, I'm afraid that didn't work. Well, I'm just doing what he's doing. <laughs> he said good. he's connected, so I was trying, but it didn't work. I'm following you. Yeah, Steve, the uh, yeah. password is not working as password. Okay, is that Spectrum Analyzer us? You, yeah, but the password's not correct. Yeah. Um, password's not password? It is not. Can someone correct it with the way? Yeah. Airport Extreme, Super 5 gigahertz. Aircraft. I'll, I'll change it, but I, I just got in using password. Really? Password. Really? Password. Oh. How do you spell password? <laughs> 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 P 
P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Update. Same way I spell it. Well, because it could be P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Yeah. Small letter S. We should actually all use the ask Foster. No, you won't be able to hear it. All you guys talk is that people. Sports four devices, right? So is it on or? Yeah, I got my cradle point. I think I think we're gonna hammer the cradle point soon. Hey, that works. He reset it right. So this is the CBR four hundred, not the HS three hundred. So there's that. Yeah. Hello. It's fixed. <laughs> We're uh, oh, filling time. Oh, hey. I see myself on the screen over there. I see you on the screen here. Oh, that has a screen too, I see. Yeah. Hey, Claire, say hi. It's working. This is not allowed. No, 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 you can't fit here. It's right, I've got the pole right here, so I can't see. <laughs> Yeah, two more joints. Yeah. Four, two. You guys have all rows up? Yeah, so you can start to see them. Yeah, I'm just to sleep. Yeah, 157. What page is it loading on? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The default page is supposed to be. This is our spectrum right here? Yep. Go to Spark. Yeah. Change it to Spark. Yeah. 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 What's the difference between the left side and the right side on the top there? Yeah. Uh, okay, is that spectrum analyzer live? What frequency are you on? Is that spec M on 157? Okay, I'm going to start the FTP no load push now. I'm doing the FTP no load, and you should see it do something. Oh, look at that. See that little hiccup right at the beginning? That was the FTP client trying to figure out there's a little gap in there. So if you're running 40, you have 40 megahertz wide channel. Okay, 22 seconds to do 600 meg. I'm going to do the upload. You should see it drop off for a second as I switch. So the upload's a little slower. Did you want to upload now? Yeah. yeah so small ones, home ones, places are two inches download. So upload was 22 seconds, download was 32. Now you want to try to hit your browser on your iPads. Okay, then you. The web page doesn't load. No. It'll just be the default. Oh. 